In this presentation, I'm going to take three separate sets of data and try to see, looking at the graphs, what type of time series method would best predict the data. Our first example is showing inventory data from time period 1 or Q1 of 2013 to Q4 of 2019, which is represented by T of 28. We always start our time value with 1 in our data. So we would like to forecast into time period 29 of the next year. I'm going to try a smooth moving average using four points because it's quarterly data. If you look at the bottom value under the SMA4 column, you see 313 as the last value. That's my best estimate for the next time period of quarter 29. When I took the residuals for this data, I took the difference between the actual inventory and the smooth moving average, got the residual, and then I got the absolute value of each of those and averaged them up. That results in MAE of 22.42. Now let's compare this with another model. This is called simple exponential smoothing. When I did this model, I got an R squared value of a whopping 33.16%. The MAE in this model is 31.26. Since this is larger than the previous model, I would go with my smooth moving average in order to predict inventory. Now let's look at Old Navy's revenue data. Here we see a reoccurring pattern of even waves that indicates a seasonal trend. So I noticed that quarter four seems to be the high every year. See quarter four, quarter eight, and then 12, 16, those are the peaks. So let's work through two different types of seasonal models. Here, I have a multiple regression model with indicator variables. The indicators are the same thing as dummy variables in regression. They will represent the quarters. What's weird is that there is no Q4, and the reason is we don't need it. It can be represented by the simple regression equation of y equals beta sub naught plus beta sub 1 times t, where every fourth quarter or multiple of 4 would fit in for t. So when we look at this model, it says y equals beta sub naught plus beta sub 1 times t plus beta sub 2 times quarter 1 plus beta sub 3 times quarter 2, plus beta sub 4 times quarter 3. Now, quarter 1, 2, and 3 are represented as either 0, it's not that quarter, or a 1, it is that quarter. So that's how I create the data over here. So for 2013, the revenue was 0.68, time period would be time period one. It was a quarter one. It was not quarter two, not quarter three. Then look at quarter four. The revenue was one, time period four. It's not a quarter one, not a quarter two, not a quarter three, so those are all zeros. By leaving out Q4, this makes the model more parsimonious. That means we get the best model we can with the fewest number of variables. Now we're going to predict Old Navy revenue with that multiple regression equation. 
So I find under parameter estimates the equation, and we would say revenue equals 1.12 plus 0 0.0407 times T minus 0.597 times Q1 minus 0.914 times Q2 minus 0.219 times Q3. All the quarters and time are good predictors based on their probabilities. R squared in this model is 0.8966. So 89.66% of the variation in revenue is explained by the model. When I calculated MAE, it doesn't show up in the jump output. But MAE for this model is 0.1475. Now let's try using a time series function in JUMP, which would be found under specialized modeling. And this is called seasonal exponential smoothing. So it's easy to remember it was seasonal data, so we're going to choose the seasonal command. When I do this, notice MAE here is 0 0.1431. When I compare that to the previous model, this one is better. So if I'm going to predict, I could go out here and find under the actual data. The dots say I have not lived through these time periods. These are forecast into future quarters. And so time period 29, 30, 31, 32, those represent 29 would be Q1 of 2020, 30 would be Q2 of 2020, 31 Q3, 32 Q4. So if I wanted to predict for quarter four of 2020, we would find the value of 2.598. Now let's look at a different set of data. Old Navy quarterly expenses from 2013 to 2019 produced this secular model that seems to have a curve in it. It's not huge, but there's a bit of one. So I'm going to try a log model and see how well that fits. When I work this out, R squared is 0.924, and I get MAE over here, it's inside this chart, of 0.1411. Okay, I had 28 time periods, and time is a good predictor. So if I ask for the equation, I could go through and use the prediction expression to get that. Or I could look under here and say that the log of expenses equals 2.98 plus 0.1689 times T. Here I tried the time series model, double exponential smoothing with the expense data. MAE here is 29.07. It's quite a bit larger. Therefore, the other model, our exponential log model, was the better at predicting expenses. If this one had been good, I could go out to the data and again look in those time periods and predict into quarter four what expenses would be. But let's go back and look at our, our good model. Here's the prediction expression, and then I use prediction profiler. I plugged in time period 32, so this is a quarter four, that's a multiple of four, of 2020, the next year. So my predicted expenses would be 4,401.69. Our 95% confidence intervals in the brackets 
So we're 95% confident the mean expenses would fall between those two values. The next set of data is Old Navy advertising cost. Overall, this data has a straight line trend. There's a big dip in it though. And so in the scenario, it says note that at the end of quarter two in 2015, the marketing director was fired and not replaced for an entire quarter. So that's that big dip or V you see in your plot. We're going to call that an episodic event. So when we look at our model and we look at our trend line, it's an excellent line. The points are very close to it. We do have the one severe outlier, which we said was called an episodic event when that marketing director was fired. It's episodic because Old Navy could not have predicted this was going to happen, but they can identify it after the fact. When we look at our model, advertising equals 5.24 plus 0.124 times time. We had the 28 different quarters in our data, and R squared is 94.44%. That's explained variation. Then when I look to see is time a good predictor, we're pretty sure it is, but his probability is less than 0.0001, so he is a good predictor. Now we've looked at several different scenarios and what I would like you to do is go back into the chapter and practice some of the problems in there. 